Norwich City, the Canaries. If you were paying attention to the Premier League from afar this season, you'd probably think Norwich are on fire. I mean, they beat reigning champions Man City and also dismantled Everton. Although they dropped points to Arsenal, so are they really that good? But Norwich actually find themselves in quite a tricky position. At the time of recording, they sit 19th in the Premier League table with just 11 points to their name. It's going to take a seismic effort for the side from Carrow Road to avoid relegation. So today, we are going to lay out the blueprint. Today, we rebuild Norwich City. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome back to another rebuild miss video here. We are headed to the Premier League once again. A lot of you guys in the comment section have been heavily requesting that we rebuild Norwich City, and that is exactly what we're going to do. But if you guys do go on to enjoy this Norwich City rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video. Also, if you are new around here, bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. We are on the push for 300,000 subscribers. If you have not had the pleasure of seeing a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. So the main objective is to win the UEFA Champions League. Every game in the rebuild is simulated except for the Champions League final. The transfers can be as unrealistic or realistic as we like. There's a big focus on the transfer window. And finally, of course, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules, let's get into the rebuild. So this is the starting lineup we have for season number one. And it is clear to see, at least from a FIFA sense, why Norwich are struggling. Yes, they have a few players like our Aarons, like Godfrey, uh, like Cantwell that are high rated prospects, but their side is not a Premier League side. It's quite low rated. And I feel like if we were to no, not make any changes and simulate, we would easily get relegated this season. So a lot of work to do here. Probably gonna go in for a top quality center back or a decent center back that can grow a lot more. A new center midfielder, a new striker. Let's see what we can do in this opening window with Norwich. Our first player departure is Tim Krul. We have sold the Dutch goalkeeper here. He is off to the Turkish league for 5.8 million pounds. The first signing of the Mr. Rebuild era at Norwich City is for Mason Holgate, the young English defender. Joining us here from Everton, 12.5 million pounds. What a pickup, welcome to Norwich, mate. We have made a massive signing. He got the job done last year for Aston Villa and he's been killing it in real life for Chelsea this season. We've managed to sign Tammy Abraham on a permanent deal and we've actually got him for a fantastic price. 13.6 million pounds to become our new striker along with Team Opuki. So we have signed a new midfielder here, our third piece of business, Florentino, the Portuguese midfielder, joining us from Benfica. No idea why he looks so depressed in his little star head there, but he should be very happy to be at Norwich City. A player departure here as well. We sell Dennis Zerberni. I have no idea how to pronounce his last name, but the German striker is off to the Swiss leagues, off to BSC Young Boys for 1.15 million pounds. Tim Closer is the latest player to depart the club, headed to Leicester City, signing on with Brendan Rodgers' Fox's side for 3.9 million pounds. I feel like I'm on a bit of a selling spree here, but Mario Vrancic is the latest player to depart the club. The Bosnian midfielder headed to the Brazilian leagues, headed to Gremio for 3.6 million pounds. Probably our final player departure of this opening window, Marco Stieperman headed to Besiktas for 3.8 million pounds. A fourth signing for us in this opening window, Lucas Martinez Quarta is gonna be joining us here. The Argentinian center back signing on from Boca Juniors 10 million pounds on the dot. There's a lot of work to do with this Norwich side and we've made a small dent into it here. Holgate, Abraham, Florentino and Martinez Porta all into the side, a lot of players out as well. Our starting 11 a lot more balanced and a lot higher in overall, but I still feel like we've got a massive challenge ahead of us if we want to survive relegation in this first season. So let's go and see how the Canaries are tracking along halfway through season one. Halfway through the season, I would say that we are in the relegation battle, but we're at a level where we are 
I don't know. I feel like we're going to be sweet. There's still a long way to go, obviously, but we are 11 points clear, 14th position. Can't rest on our laurels, but not like Bournemouth. They're in a crap position. Virtually, Villa down at Bournemouth. They're the sides that you'd put money on to go down. We're in an all right position. I just want to survive this season, though. The top of the table, however, Man City, not a single loss, not a single draw. They are 20 and 0. They are flying. Moritz Litna has been sold here to Getafe, and Ernel Hernandez has been sold to Buenos Aires, which I believe is Boca Juniors. But we've got a decent amount of money in now. Let's go try making an upgrade in this January window. And Tom Tribal has also left the club. We're getting rid of a lot of our older 20s players. But Tom Tribal is headed to Galatasaray. He's only 26, but he's headed to Galatasaray for 4.85 million pounds. An upgrade to the left mid position here. Jacob Brun Larsen, the Danish midfielder, joining us from Borussia Dortmund. 10 million pounds on the dot. How's he already unhappy? Are you kidding me, mate? Anyways, we've signed him. Hopefully he does well. Larsen in, and then we've sold Hernandez, Leitner, and Tribal. Again, another addition to our side. Another player that can grow. Are we going to survive relegation here in Season 1? Let's go find out the answer. 14th position in our opening Premier League season. Not too bad at all. We finished 13 points clear of the relegation zone as Sheffield United, Aston Villa and Bournemouth all get relegated. What a terrible performance from Bournemouth. One win all season. That is absolutely disgraceful. As we scroll up the table though, Man City end up going invincible. They end up being Centurions. They have won the Premier League title. Liverpool in second position. Tottenham and Arsenal third and fourth. We're not concerned about that side of the table though. We're concerned about the relegation battle and I'm just stoked to be stay staying up this season. Tottenham did take down Brighton to win the FA Cup at the start of the season. Man City took down Liverpool to win the Carabao Cup. Man City took down Real Madrid to win the Champions League. So it's been a pretty good season for the citizens. And Arsenal have taken down Lazio to win the Europa League. So we've laid the foundations here in season number one. We've got a few decent players in. We've had a survival season. Let's build on that in season two and see if we can crack the top half of the Premier League table. Philip Heiss wanted out of the club, so we've sent him down to West London, off to Craven Cottage, signing with Fulham for £770,000. And on the very same day, we make our first signing for the season, Arnie Meyer. Joining us here, £16.8 million for the German, bringing him across from Hertha Berlin. Sam Byram out of the club. The right back headed down south to Brighton and Hove Albion for £4.2 million. A lot of players to get rid of here in this second season. Another one to add to that tally is Josip Dermic. He wanted out of the club. I was happy to keep him, but the Swiss striker now headed to La Liga, signing with Levante for 7.6 million pounds. Kenny McLean, another one of our players headed down south. This time, the midfielder is off to Bournemouth. We have sold him for 3.3 million pounds. Grant Hanley, the latest player to depart the club, off to Gank for 1.45 million pounds. Varman was only here on loan last season, so we've lost him and had to bring in a new number one. Zach Steffen, the American has been that number one. We've signed the American goalkeeper across from Manchester City for £16 million. Not a massive deal at all, but we have parted ways with Sean Raggett, who is headed to Huddersfield for £920,000. We have worked so hard to make this happen, pushed so many pennies, and we have brought in Casper Dolberg as our new starting striker to partner up with Tammy Abraham. I haven't signed Casper Dolberg in a rebuild in so long. I remember in like FIFA 17, FIFA 18, this kid was the go. He was the striker you signed in rebuilds. He's dropped off in potential a little bit, but we have brought the Danish striker in here from Nice for £18.2 million. So it's been another busy window here to kick off season number two. Three massive signings to our starting lineup, and it continues to grow. A lot of player departures as well. Our manager rating is just so low because a few players like Zimmerman want to leave the club. I've actually accepted an offer for Zimmerman, so... I'm going to advance down. I'm going to show you guys in case he leaves in the last hour of the transfer window. 
or does it break down? We're about to find out. Deadline day has ended and the transfer talks have broken down. So if I get sacked, I'm blaming it on you, Christoph Zimmerman. So we have accepted an offer here on the 27th of September to sell Christoph Zimmerman when the window opens. So come January 1st, he'll be boarding a plane to France and signing with Stade de Rems. Halfway through the season, we find ourselves in 11th position. I said I wanted to push for a top 10 finish, so we're on a good track for doing just that. We're on 26 points and the relegation zone is less than with 13. That's a far cry from where they're going right now. So we've got double the points needed to be out of the relegation zone which is definitely good fulham one point for them that's a bit worrying but at the top of the table man city killing it again a few teams breathing down their necks but we're comfortable in mid table right now no business done in this january transfer window only had two million pounds to work with so nothing crazy to improve this squad a lot of the squad getting themselves into the 80s now a few on the cusp of it that is great to see I just want the squad to continue growing and to either give us an option to sell on players for ridiculous amounts of money or have players like Abraham that can stay here for the entirety of the rebuild. But let's go see if we can achieve that top half of the table finish. 10th position here in season number two. That is right on mid table. When you say mid table, 10th position is as mid table as it gets. To be fair, we weren't that far off a top six, although no, Wolves were on 71 points, but between 7th and 10th, and even 11th, there wasn't that much. So I'm glad to see that we're starting to push up the table a little bit. Leicester get, got out of the relegation zone, Cardiff, West Brom, and Fulham were all relegated, and Liverpool ended up winning the Premier League with 105 points. Oh my. Everton did win the FA Cup this season, however. And Liverpool, they did win the Carabao Cup over Manchester United. Liverpool also managed to win the Champions League this season. So a very successful season for the Reds. And Man United took down Leon to win the Europa League. Quick little look through the squad. I know you guys wanted to see the stats. We didn't score many goals this season, to be fair. Kasper Dolberg put the side on his back, scored 19 goals, but then nobody else managed to get into double digits, which is quite worrying, especially for Abraham. The squad growing so nicely, especially in overall, a very balanced team. Mid-table finish this year. Hopefully the board gives us good money. I would love to make a push for Europa League football. I don't think we're ready for Champions League, but Europa League football in season three. Season three has begun and Ben Godfrey has left. This isn't a piece of business I wanted to do, but understandably, he moved as our reserve center back. He wasn't happy. He asked for a release. We've sold him for a pretty good price for Fiorentina standards, eight million pounds to Fiorentina. We've taken our back line to a new extreme. Our first signing and maybe our only signing of this third opening window Edem Militao coming across from Real Madrid. 34.2 million pounds for the Brazilian defender. 83 rated at age 23. Try telling me there's something that isn't satisfying about all that green and yellow in that top right corner. We've got the Norwich logo, the Brazilian badge, all the stats. That looks very nice. Regardless, I digress. Welcome to Norwich City, Adair Militao. In a move that might frustrate some Norwich fans, we have decided to sell Timu Puki to FC Mets here. The Finnish striker is finished at Norwich City. I had to make that joke, I'm sorry. But we've sold him to FC Mets for 10 million pounds. I have decided to sell Lucas Martinez Quarta our center back that we signed in season one, two wolves for 22 million pounds. I want to go ahead and get another top quality center back that can grow with Ed Air Militao, take our defense, our squad as a whole to a new level. So best of luck, Lucas. Andreas Christensen is our next center back joining us here. He's going to join alongside Edem Militao. I've, I've noticed just now we've signed a fair few Danes in this rebuild. I haven't intended to do that, but 
Denmark, their football, it's a decent little call coming up soon. But anyways, Andreas Christensen signing for £30 million from Watford. Firmly focusing on defensive improvements this window. Militown Christensen in, Godfrey Puki and Martinez out of the club. This is what the side looks like. A lot of 82s. That spine is looking very, very good there. Players growing together. I'm happy with what we're doing so far. I think we can definitely make a push for Europa League football, but ultimately, I just want the side to exponentially grow. We're making a firm push for European football, for Europa League football here, as we currently find ourselves sitting in seventh position on the 1st of January. That's not bad at all. Relegation zone. I think we're past the point now. Oh my God, I just clocked it that Chelsea are down in 16th. Please, FIFA gods, if you can hear me, let Chelsea get relegated. West Ham are down there as well. Big clubs are really struggling, but I think we're past the point in this rebuild of being even worried about relegation. Now it's onwards and upwards. Man City currently top of the league. We're worried about getting in those fifth, sixth, positions. No business done in this January transfer window. I actually wanted to try making a pre-contract signing, but there was nobody that suited our side. Like I was thinking a left midfielder or a right midfielder, somewhere like that. Nobody that I wanted to go for was able to get, and it was just a whole damn process. But anyways, we're going to simulate now to the end of season three, hopefully with the prospect of European football coming to, to Carrow Road next season. Sixth position here in the Premier League this season, 70 points. That is a fantastic performance on the cusp of Europa League football. Oh man, we're starting to finally break through. Wolves five points behind us. We weren't close to that top five. Arsenal 14 points clear. Next season, I feel like a few more signings will start to challenge, but definitely a big improvement from where we were from day one. Man City have won yet another Premier League title, and as we scroll down, Chelsea avoided relegation. No, but West Ham! Oh man, West Ham United have gone down to the championship along with Brighton and Sheffield United. Chelsea only safe by six points. That's funny as. In the FA Cup, it was Tottenham taking down West Brom to win that tournament. And Man City have taken down Man United to win the Carabao Cup on penalties. Borussia Dortmund have won an all-German Champions League final. It's a replay of when Bayern beat them in the 2012 final, maybe 2014? The one that was at Wembley. And Man City, despite winning the Premier League or finishing second last season, didn't make it through to the Champions League. They ended up winning the Euro League over Borussia and Munchen Gladbach. Our manager rating is in the danger zone and thankfully we have survived this season but we need to start off season four strong otherwise we might get sacked which is just a mind-boggling mind-boggling decision. I have decided to part ways with Zach Steffen. We're going to go ahead and use that money plus the budget we already have to get a goalkeeper who I reckon could be here for the remainder of the rebuild. Zach Steffen sold to AS Monaco for £26.9 million. And we have loaned out Daniel Adshed to Swansea City for the season. Todd Cantwell, another player that wanted out of the club desperately. He's been sold to Crystal Palace for 18.6 million pounds. And Jordan Pickford is our new number one here at Carrow Road. The English international shot stopper joins us for 40 million pounds from Borussia Dortmund, 86 rated. Hopefully we can win the Champions League before he turns 30. I want to win it in the next two seasons, but what a big pickup that is. Welcome to Norwich City. And Adam Eder has been loaned out as well this fourth season, headed to Club Bruges for the next year. We have decided to part ways with Emiliano Buandia. He's been here since day one. He's a current Norwich player, but the Argentine has made the move to Tottenham. 54.4 million pounds for him. Let's go and get ourselves an end game right midfielder. That is an upgrade and a half. Nicholas bloody Pepe joining us here. The Ivorian signs on from Arsenal, 77.2 million pounds. We are having a serious crack at qualifying for the Champions League and even winning the Europa League this season. We've spent virtually every penny, every pound we have 
in our transfer budget to make this happen. It is such a worthy signing. Welcome to Norwich. The double P window, Pickford and Pepe both into the starting side. Stefan Cantwell and Buendia all out of it. And all of a sudden, we have a very serious football side. Larson, Lewis, and Aaron's lagging behind slightly, but I'm willing to give them time. I'm willing to let them develop until we are in the Champions League because as soon as we qualify for the Champions League, which I'm hoping is going to be next season that we're playing Champions League football, we are going to be going all in. Our starting lineup is insane. Let's see how we're tracking along come January 1st. On the 1st of January, we find ourselves in fifth position, which isn't great. I want those automatic Champions League spots. We want the top four. Right now, we're trying to do it the hard way. We've got a Big, big deficit to overturn though. Tottenham 10 points ahead of us. We're going to have to be near perfect in the second half of the season if we want to be playing Champions League next season, which is quite frustrating. No business done in this window. I mean, 39. I couldn't even sign a decent pre-contract player. That's what happened when we spent virtually every cent we had on Nicolas Pepe. The squad continuing to grow, which is good to see. But the big question that lingers over everything, will we have Champions League football? If we don't, that is going to be a massive, massive L. Fifth position at the end of this season. That's frustrating. I think that means that it's Europa League football again next season. I might be wrong. We might get some playoffs, but... That is disappointing. Liverpool winning the league. Man City just behind them. And the relegated sides are... Oh, Chelsea got relegated! Let's go! I mean, I don't have anything against Chelsea, but that is funny as... Oh, man. Chelsea have been relegated with Southampton and Huddersfield. Unlucky. Taking a look around the other competitions, however, Man United did win the FA Cup. Tottenham won the Carabao Cup. I know we made it and got absolutely destroyed in the semis. Barcelona 4-1 over Liverpool to win the Champions League. Oh, we've won the Europa League. Let's go. So we're playing Champions League football next year. We have taken down Arsenal. 2-1 to win the Europa League here with Norwich City. How good is that? In the semis, we beat Wolfsburg on away goals rule. In the quarterfinals, we absolutely battered Lille. Round of 16, we took down Roma. And in the round of 32, it was FC Copenhagen. That is absolutely brilliant. Come on, the Canaries. So that is an absolutely fantastic way to round out this season. We're making great progress here. Hopefully we get compensated financially and we can have a, an opportunity to go extremely deep, if not win the Champions League next season. A left back signing here to kick off the fifth season. Sergio Regulion, or Regulion, I don't know, I don't speak Spanish, but he's joining us here at Norwich City. We have signed him for 48 million pounds, a plus two upgrade on Lewis. And speaking of Jamal Lewis, we have sold him and we've sold him for, get this right, 83.6 million pounds. That is an incredible transfer fee. Welcome to Bayern Munich. I'm telling him welcome because Welcome, 83 million pounds to our bank balance. I could not say no to this. So, we're going for the Champions League this season. Jacob Brun Larsen, he's been good. I wanted him to be here the whole time, but he's 83 rated. And when you can get 88.4 million pounds for an 83 rated player, you take it. We now have almost 200 million pounds to work with. This could be some real fun. Let this sink in. We have just signed Raheem Sterling. 91 rated? Yeah, 91 rated left winger. We signed him for 4 million pounds more than we sold Larson. We got a plus 8 overall upgrade. One of the world's best players at this point of the career mode for 4 million pounds. 
That is incredible. Welcome to Norwich City, Raheem Sterling. Oliver Torres is going to join us here. We have signed the Spaniard as a bit of relief for our bench. I know we have a very mediocre, or not even a mediocre, a pretty weak bench. So we have signed Oliver Torres to be a backup centre midfielder. 20 million pounds from Sevilla. Pierre Luigi Golini is joining the club as a backup goalkeeper. The Italian joins from Atalanta for 12.8 million pounds. Miguel Almiron is joining us at Norwich City. The Paraguayan midfielder can play so many roles and that's what makes him so valuable as a rotational player. He can play right mid, he can play left mid, he can play attacking mid. He is going to help us as a real rotational player. He is a rotational player in every sense of the world. Word. Welcome to Cairo Road. Miguel Almiron. Probably our final signing of this window. Calvin Phillips joining us for 18.9 million pounds. A steal from Genoa. Very happy with that pickup. He can play center defensive mid. He can play center back. That's a good pickup. The way I say that, it sounds like I'm trying to justify it to myself, but no, I'm happy with it. It's like when you were younger and you'd open presents at Christmas and you'd get something you did not want at all, but you'd justify when you're gonna use it. Ah, oh, thanks for the cufflings, honey Joe. Can't wait to put them on all the suits I'm wearing considering I'm eight years old. So we've gone absolutely wild here. We've signed so many players. We've sold only two of them, but the two players we sold were decent players, but we got a lot of money for them. And now this is what our starting lineup looks like. Very, very happy with that one. I've got to go and put, let me go and put Phillips in the bench as well. I mean, our starting lineup is incredible. Our bench now, decent. It went from absolutely dreadful to decent now. I'm very, very optimistic about this fifth season. What can we do in Norwich City? Let's go and have a gander at our first ever Champions League group with Norwich. Group B, and there is one clear side that stands out to us as our biggest opponents, and that is Lokomotiv Moscow. No, of course, it is Juventus. They're our biggest competition here, along with our Red Bull Salzburg in the group as well. So I'm very, very interested to see how we go. I would expect us to get out of this group, especially given how good our side is, but anything can happen, can't it? Top of the group, that is a massive tick in our column. Juventus were a massive challenge and clearly we have beaten them, so that is brilliant to see. That fills me with a boatload of confidence. But now the question is, in the round of 16, who are we versing? And the answer to that is Borussia Dortmund, so a fine challenge to see what we are made of. Not the toughest side in the world, but definitely by no means a rollover. I'm sure they've signed some crazy good plays in the past five seasons. Very, very excited to take them on. On the 1st of January in the Premier League, we find ourselves sitting in third position as well. 17 wins, three draws, one loss. A great start. We're in a title race, but for me, the biggest thing, you guys would know if you watched a rebuild before, once we're in the Champions League, I don't want to leave the Champions League. We definitely need a top four finish if we aren't to win it this year. No real surprise that we have done no business in this window. And something, however, that scares me a lot is this. Look, look who Borussia Dortmund have brought in. They've brought in Boy Wonder. They've brought in the Cyborg. Oh dear. He's 88 rated, so our strikers are higher rated, but that is a scary proposition that we have to verse. Haaland in the round of 16. But anyways, that's the end of the January transfer window. Can we do it this season? Can we win the Champions League? Let's go and face Dortmund in the round of 16. Sergio Rajulion is injured for the first leg here. We're traveling away to the Signal Aduna Park. Come on, this is going to be a massive, massive test. The score is a one-all draw. Raheem Sterling, though, coming off with an injury... I really hope it's not bad. They got a red card to Lindelof, but it's one all. We have an away goal. And it's a torn quad for Sterling. That one really, really hurts. No Raheem Sterling. No Sergio Rajulion. We are up shit creek without a paddle headed into this second leg. That's why I bought so many rotational players. So Holgate in and then Torres in. We have the away goal advantage. An away goal keeps us in, or a clean sheet keeps us in. And it does just that. How have we held on? 
nil nil in the second leg so we go through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League limping absolutely limping one all away goals rule I love you Atletico Madrid in the Champions League quarterfinals a massive massive challenge ahead of us here even bigger than Bayern or Borussia Dortmund I should say we're still without Raheem Sterling which is frustrating but we do have Rajulion back into the side. But let's stop speculating and let's go take on Atletico. Here we go. The first leg coming up. A massive challenge for us without Raheem Sterling. The goal needs to be keeping a clean sheet. Can we do it at home at Caro Road against Atletico Madrid? It's a 2-1 advantage there for Madrid. That is not good at all. Two away goals for them as well. We're going to have to put in a massive performance on the road if we are to beat them. Here we go. The away leg coming up here against Atletico Madrid. We are 2-1 down. We need away goals. We need to score at least two goals here. And the scoreline is 3-2. Wait. Have we gone through? I need to do some quick math. They won 2-1. 3-2. I can't think right now. We went through. We went through on away goals rule. Dolberg and Phillips. I think we've gone through. Hold up. 2-1. Oh, fuck. I dropped math in year 10 at school, and it's really showing that I couldn't put those together. But it's 4 all. We go through on away goals rule. I can't believe it. Manchester United in the Champions League semi-finals. We are trying to book ourselves a spot in the final to face either Bayern Munich or Real Madrid this season. And we're going to have to do the Red Devils over if we want to get there. The good news is that Raheem, the Dream Sterling, is back into the side here for the first leg. So we have a full strength starting 11 at home here at Carrow Road. The scoreline, a 2-0 win. How clean is that? Abraham and Christensen scoring. They don't score any away goals. We head into the second leg in a perfect position. I'm just wondering who that O'Hara guy in between the sticks is. Okay, we're in a strong position here, headed into the away leg. I want a clean result. A nil-nil draw with no injuries or suspensions would be the absolute dream here. Are we going to get that? Yeah, we're going to get a 3-0 win. A yellow card to Christensen, though. But we are through to the Champions League final to face either Real Madrid or Bayern Munich. I'm just praying that Christensen isn't suspended. The Canaries versus the Galacticos in the Champions League final here for season number five. I knew that we had a roster good enough to go deep. But is it good enough to go all the way? That is the answer we're going to find out. Taking a look around the other competitions, Roma won an all-Italian Europa League final. We narrowly miss out on being crowned Premier League champions. We finish in second position. At least that means we get another shot at the Champions League next season if we don't take down Real Madrid tonight. But would have been really nice to win the Premier League title there. Anyways, scrolling down the table, and it's going to be Brighton, West Ham, and Fulham. Fulham have come up twice and gone down twice with a whimper in this rebuild. West Ham, they must have come up and gone back down as well. We did win the FA Cup 3-0 over Liverpool, however, which is fantastic news. But Liverpool did take down Man City to win the Carabao Cup. So a look at our squad report here at the end of the fifth season ahead of the Champions League final. Fortunately, we are the full strength starting 11. I know it has that little red symbol next to Christensen, but he is playing in the final he is not suspended to my knowledge so I'm very very excited to see what we can do here we've put together a good squad very keen to use Raheem Sterling Dolberg all these crazy good players look at that they've shared look at how many goals Pepe got oh my god 43 goals we've been scoring a lot of goals this season but let's go see how this Norwich City side does against Real Madrid it's the Champions League final in season five
the Canaries versus the Galacticos. Only one of us can be crowned Champions League winners, however. Hopefully it's us. Counter-attacking time here. Pepe. Through to Dolberg. Kasper Dolberg. There's an opportunity for the sweaty goal. We're going to take it ourselves. It helps so much when Thibaut Courtois goes down early. Look how early Courtois went down for it. Before I'd even press B, he'd gone down, giving us an easier angle. Half lofted over him. And that is going to be a 1-0 lead. Our habit of scoring early goals has continued. Real Madrid looking for a quick equaliser. They've got the luck of the bounce there. It wouldn't let me change. They've played it through. What a save. Fortunately offside. But what a save. I, the auto switching on this game is still crook. I was trying to change there to number three. But it wouldn't, thankfully, offside. All right, we've got a corner here. Sterling is going to pass the ball there into the box. Looking for a good shooting opportunity. Not with Christensen, it's not going to be. Florentino going here. Dolberg. We're looking for opportunities. It's going to fall nicely. It's going to go. Save from Courtois. The bounce of the ball definitely going our way here, but not well enough. Going here to Pepe. Pepe over the top to Dolberg. Kasper Dolberg on a tough angle. If we scored that, I would have been absolutely shocked. But we need to get ourselves a second goal here. All the momentum is with us. We need to capitalize on it. They've gone through here, Madrid. Sloppy as, bro. Oh, it's fallen to them again. How? Vinicius Jr. We've lunged in. Great save from Pickford. Sloppy defense on my behalf. Vinicius Jr. almost made us pay for it. Real Madrid on the attack here. Ricardo Pereira. Sending that one in. Oh, we can't defend it well enough. Asensio. Good block, Christensen. Good. We get him out of the corner. Real Madrid have been very strong in this second half. But now, Abraham. Good ball there to Raheem Sterling. Raheem the Dream looking for the right option. I see that run of Abraham. But we're going to keep going with Raheem Sterling. Sterling. Oh, it's blocked. Come on. We need to get that second goal to really open up doubt in Real Madrid's mind. Abraham. Through. Sterling. In between the legs. There it is. Raheem Sterling has doubled our advantage in the Champions League final. It's been such a back and forth game here. But we finally get a little bit of daylight. Beautiful ball from Abraham and a tidy little finish there from Sterling in between the legs of Courtois. And we have doubled our advantage. Oh, Asensio has tackled us there. That's just crap. Oh, my. What is that? So I'm pressing A to head it back to the keeper. That's a logical thing, isn't it? Look at this. I'm with Militao. I press A. He chests it to him. Why do you chest it to Ericsson? Just like that, we've opened up the door again for Real Madrid. Why did you think chesting it was a good idea, Militao? Use your noggin. 90th minute here. Real Madrid pushing forward, looking for a last-minute equaliser. We need to clear the ball away. We clear the ball away and we get through. Clear it. There it is. The referee blows the full-time whistle. And we have won the Champions League with Norwich City 2-1 over Real Madrid. Lads, what a rebuild it was. We put together a crazy good side. If you enjoyed this rebuild with the Canaries, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe down below if you're new around here, but I'll let you savor in these title celebrations. Enjoy lifting the title, Maximilian Aarons, or whatever your name is. But it's been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace.